Hey everyone, it's the Ionic Guy here. Today's video, I want to show you guys how preconditioning functions in the Ionic 5. Now, this is going to apply to the EV6 as well, but I don't have an EV6, so you'll just have to take my word on it. But many of you already know that I did recently get the software update to my early model 2022 Ionic 5 that didn't come with preconditioning from the factory, but we did get it as a software update about a year later. So I do believe that there is no difference between my car and one that had it from the factory, other than one little detail that I'll show you guys later, but I do believe that it should be mostly the same between the two variants of the car. So the number one criteria that has to be met for preconditioning to function is that the battery has to be below 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. If your battery is warmer than that, it doesn't need to activate because you already have a warm battery. I've also found that in my testing that when the battery is at a steady state temperature of low 40s, like 40 to 45 degrees, it takes just about 30 minutes to get to 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. And that's important because the high end of the battery pack will be much hotter than that. You'll see in the 80s, possibly 90 degree area. But to achieve high DC fast charge speeds, the battery has to be at its minimum temperature of at least 70 degrees, or else it won't be able to accept full charging power, depending on your state of charge. Because if you show up to a DC fast charger with a 50 or 60% full battery pack, you're not going to get super high charging speeds because at that point, the battery is already starting to kind of taper off when it's DC fast charging from say 10 to 80%. So you want the battery to be relatively low state of charge and you want it to be warm. And if you meet those two criteria, you should get pretty high DC fast charging speeds. Another thing to keep in mind is that once your battery pack reaches a minimum state of charge of 20%, battery preconditioning will automatically turn off. And this is to make sure that you can get to your destination. Now, some might argue that this is kind of a high threshold to cut off battery heating because the battery heating will use about four and a half to five and a half kilowatts of power. And if it's only activated for 30 minutes at a time, you're only using two and a half kilowatt hours of power. And for most people driving Ionic 5, you're gonna see around three miles per kilowatt hour. So that's only gonna be about seven or eight miles of distance reduction for that 30 minute period where it's warming up the battery. So if you're at 20%, you should still have a decent amount of range and that eight miles isn't that big of a deal. But that's the number that they picked. Some owners might say, well, let me choose that threshold myself. Let me say 10% or 15%. I think Hyundai's probably erring on the side of caution just because so many people are new to EVs. This is their first EV and they don't want them to be caught off guard, not making it to their destination because if that happens, that leaves a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. And we all know what that leads to. So let's go ahead and assume that today I'm gonna to take a road trip up to Boston. I'm gonna to go to a game at the TD Garden and we need to stop and charge on the way because I forgot to charge my car last night and I don't have enough to get to Boston. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use voice control to input my destination as the TD Garden Arena in Boston. Navigate to TD Garden Arena in Boston. Would you like guidance to this location? Now you have to hit route options. Moving to the screen where route options can be set. So apparently there's two roads close to that destination. So I'm just gonna pick one cause I don't know which one it is. But now on this screen here, you can go ahead and set a charger as your waypoint. So once you get to this screen, you can go ahead and hit add waypoint. Now with preconditioning, you can't search for a DC fast charger and input that is your charging destination because the preconditioning won't start properly. So what you have to do is you have to pick it from a list of point of interest categories, EV charging stations. And you can see here on the left side, there's a few options. So you have a long route, which is what we're gonna use in this case, near current position, which will show chargers near where I am currently positioned, near destination, which will be chargers in downtown Boston. And then you can have a list of favorite stations if you already have them favorited from a previous road trip. So in this case, we're gonna pick a long route. And let's go ahead and 
stop at the Holiday Inn Express in Sturbridge. So once you have it selected, you can go ahead and press OK. And you can see it's now input as my charging stop, my first waypoint. Hit Calculate. And now you can go ahead and start guidance. Please proceed to the highlighted route. <clears throat> Then the route guidance will start. So we should see any second now a message pop up on the driver display saying that preconditioning is starting. And you can see it's 48 degrees out right now, so the battery is a little cold. So it is going to start preconditioning the battery. Battery conditioning activated. And you can now see a snowflake in the driver display indicating that the battery is preconditioning for charging. So the big thing that I've noticed right now is that my car for some reason shows a snowflake when preconditioning the battery. More people are seeing a red little heating coil that shows up in the charging indicator percentage bar representing that the battery is warming up. I did a poll today on my channel and it looks like most people have a red heating coil whereas very few have a snowflake. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this route so the battery doesn't warm up so I can show you some more things here. So you can also input a destination by typing it in and searching for it manually. Right here, I'll go ahead and pick it because I searched for it previously. So there's my route. I can add a waypoint. Point of interest categories, EV charging stations. So this time, let's go ahead and choose the DC fast charger at the Charlton rest stop. But what you can see here is that this destination, as opposed to the Holiday Inn Express, is closer to 36 miles instead of 30. So let's see if battery preconditioning starts when your destination is over 30 miles away. So we're currently in navigation mode, heading to the Charlton rest area, and we'll wait the same amount of time between one and two minutes to see if battery preconditioning starts. So it's been a couple minutes and battery preconditioning has not activated. So in my testing over the last few days, I have found that between 30 and 35 miles is when it will decide to begin activating the battery preconditioning feature. So if you're on a road trip, presumably it should begin preconditioning the battery at about 30 miles away or 30 minutes. So one of the biggest limitations of preconditioning with the Ionic 5 is that it's not like Tesla. You can't say, I want to go to here and have it just plan a route, plan all your charging stops, warm the battery when it needs to, and you'll get to your destination just fine. You're going to have to do some more planning, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So let's do an example here. Let's say I want to go to Mount Rushmore out in South Dakota. Navigate to Mount Rushmore. Would you like guidance to this location? Route Moving options. Moving to the screen where route options can be set. So it says insufficient charge to reach destination. Then it allows you to search for a DC fast charger. Proceed to the highlighted route. Then the route guidance will start. So as you can see here, you have all the same options as before. And we obviously want to search along the route that the car is planning. The issue is here is that you can only go as far as 115 miles out from where I currently sit. This is a problem because if I leave my house right now with a 100% battery pack, I can drive probably around 200 miles. So why would I want to stop at 115 to charge in Newburgh, New York? So unfortunately, this list isn't longer. The only other option that works from this screen is to search near your destination. So you only have from the beginning of your trip and the end of your trip to search along the route, which is honestly pretty useless. So this is going to take some due diligence on your part to find your first comfortable charging stop and to navigate to it. And for a lot of people, that's a pain in the butt. Now you have to go into the Electrify America app or EVgo app or whatever, plug share, find a destination, and you have to find it in the navigation system. Now let's just say you go in and search for an Electrify America station that you know exists. So I'll search for Electrify America. And you can see here's one that I've already searched before. This is the one in Manchester, Connecticut. So I'll click on that. Start guidance. Please proceed to the highlighted route. Then the and we'll see what the car does. So 
So the battery pack is not warming up. Preconditioning did not activate. So this isn't ideal. But now we can see if I go into navigation, POI categories, EV charging stations, and I find that exact same charging station under POI categories and click on it, set as destination, start guidance. Now let's see what happens. So now we see battery conditioning is activated for optimal DC charging. So this is a problem and it's gonna catch a lot of people off guard, especially when you're driving on a road trip. People are gonna search for charging stops and they're just gonna pick them. They're not gonna pick them from the POI categories and then they're not gonna get optimal DC fast charging speeds. So if you're on a road trip and you know the route that you're gonna be taking, what you can do is from the map screen, you can drag the crosshair around to a distance that you think you can make it to from your next stop. And you could base this off of Google Maps, off of Waze, what have you. But find a rough area of where you need to navigate to. And then when you drag the crosshair there, you can go ahead and click POI categories. And then you can search for EV charging stations. And now you can see these are all charging stations near Boston, which I'm 100 miles from right now. So this is a little workaround if you need to find a charging station that isn't listed in your POI categories list. So something I've noticed that in the POI categories list, it does not matter which little DC icon you see here. As long as it says DC, the battery preconditioning should start properly. It doesn't matter if it says DC, DC plus, what have you, because I've seen a few of them listed. So for example, the Electrify America station, which is the only one in the area, shows as DC plus. So that means that it is a high power charger as opposed to some of these ones at dealerships that are likely 50 kilowatts, 75 kilowatts. They're not the maximum charging power that you could give to the Ionic 5 or the EV6. So if you see DC plus listed in the list of chargers, that is most likely an Electrify America, an EVgo, or a high power charge point station. So, so those are gonna be the ones that you really wanna look for if you're on a road trip. Specifically Electrify America because we get two years of free charging. Now another thing you can do is if you have a set of DC fast chargers on a route that you normally take, say you do a 400 mile road trip once a month or something, and you want them to just be there so you can pick them easily. When you search for a DC fast charger, say this is the one in Manchester, I want that one. You can go ahead and click the little star there and that favorites it. So that adds it to your favorite stations list right here down on the left, which makes it easier to get to. And under the navigation screen, when you press the button down above the HVAC controls, if you click favorite one, you can go ahead and find a EV charging station from here. So we'll go ahead and add that Manchester location, hit okay. So if I go ahead and pick it from the list here, it's going to calculate a route. Start guidance. Please proceed to the highlighted route. Then the route guidance will start. And now we should see that battery preconditioning will begin. So there we go. Battery conditioning activated again. So now let's say I want to go and charge up my car at the local EA station. I am only 10 minutes away from it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate navigation to that EA charger. And then I'm going to just let the car sit here in my driveway for a few minutes and we'll see how long it takes to get up to that minimum battery cell temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 degrees C. I've got my OBD2 scanner plugged into the car and I'm gonna go ahead and make a screen recording of those battery cell temperatures with time. So looking at my battery cell temperatures right now prior to the heating activating, my battery min is 51.8 degrees Fahrenheit and my battery max is 53.6. So at these temperatures, charging rates would be significantly diminished, but once they're up to 70 degrees, they should be much better. So battery conditioning just kicked on and you can see the battery power being pulled right now is 5.42 kilowatts.
We can check how much power is being pulled from the battery to warm it by going to EV, up to this little the guy right here, energy information, electricity use, and you can see here battery care is 5.2 kilowatts. You can see right when starting to warm the battery, I have about 168 miles of range and 75% state of charge. And it's currently 47 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So we'll go ahead and let this sit. We'll track our temperatures and we'll be back shortly. So here on the left hand side, you can see I put together a chart that shows battery temperature as a function of time. And you can see on the low end, the battery is a little slower to warm up, but then it's pretty much a straight line all the way up to 70, 21 degrees C. And it took just about 24 and a half minutes total. Preconditioning just turned off. You can see there's no more battery power being drawn other than the electronics in the car. And if we go over to this screen here, we can see all the different cell temperatures. You can see we've got a nice toasty battery now. All the cells are for the most part within 70 to 80 degrees. The battery max is 86 and the battery minimum is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So in total, that took just about 26 minutes, which is pretty good. It's not stupid cold out today, it's 47 degrees. So the battery wasn't super cold to begin with. And I'll have to do some more testing in zero degrees or 10 degrees Fahrenheit weather and see how long that takes. Something else you'll notice is that that 30 minute preconditioning cycle only hit our range by four miles and 2% of the battery capacity. So it's really not that big of a loss when it means you're gonna gain a much quicker charging session, especially since we're not paying for Electrify America station stops. Granted, if you are paying out of pocket, depending on what station and network you're using, they're usually around 35 to 45 cents per kilowatt hour. So two and a half, three kilowatt hours, you're gonna pay a dollar to a dollar 50 for the benefit of preconditioning the battery pack. So it's not a super big hit, but it is there and you do pay a price. And just remember, any little bit closer to 70 degrees you are, you're that much closer to getting really fast charging speeds on a road trip. Another perk of battery preconditioning is that if you live within 30 miles of an EA station, you can go ahead before you leave on a road trip, set your destination as that charger, leave the car parked at home, precondition the battery, get it nice and warm, then go ahead, top off your battery with a level two charger, get your battery back up to 100%, and the combination of 100% charge plus a nice warm battery pack means you're gonna get much better efficiency and you're gonna get more range when leaving your house on a road trip. And then eventually when you do get to another DC fast charger, your battery will still be a little bit warmer than it would have been if it were cold. And just the act of DC fast charging is gonna bring the battery temperature back up so your range and efficiencies should both still be fairly decent. So this definitely does make road tripping just a little bit better. So there you have it guys. There's an overview of battery preconditioning for the Hyundai Ionic 5 and the Kia EV6. It kind of goes the same for the Genesis GV60, but their navigation system does look just a little bit different from ours. So do some testing with it. I hope it helps you guys out on your road trips. Any little bit of battery warming is better than none on a road trip. But if you look at this video here from my first road trip trying battery preconditioning, I had some issues. It didn't start until I was 15 minutes away from my destination. So the battery never got fully warmed and I did not realize the DC fast charging speeds that I was hoping for. So as you can see, the system does have some limitations and some faults, but all in all, it is a tool for us to use for road tripping. So it's good that we have it and the system does work well. It's just getting it activated, which is the sometimes tricky part. So go ahead, let me know down in the comments section how your experience has been with preconditioning, whether you had the software update or if you had it installed directly from the factory on your late model 2022 all-wheel drive or a 2023 rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody. So if you're anything like me, you were probably disappointed after you purchased your Hyundai Ionic 5 and realized that there was no overhead storage for your sunglasses. So I solved that problem with the Hyundai Ionic 5 magnetic eyewear holder. It simply clips onto the magnetic area next to the driver display and your sunglasses go right onto it. These are 3D printed in PETG and will not soften in the heat of your car. They utilize a one and a quarter inch rare earth magnet that keeps them securely on your dashboard 
and a strip of Velcro protects the frames of your glasses. These will work well with thick plastic frame glasses, such as Ray-Ban Wayfarers, but not so much with wire frame glasses like Aviators. These are available for $20 plus shipping at the link below in white or black. Thanks for checking them out.